Let's talk about polyptychs or diptychs or triptychs. So a polyptic, uh, in a very short way of putting it, is a, a series of pictures. Traditionally, they've been altarpieces, painted or carved on two or three hinge tablets. But the real important thing about it is it's a work made up of two, three, or more matching parts. Matching is the key. <clears throat> there are images that work together in order to sort of create a a deeper meaning or or a fuller meaning of the of the photo that's going on. <clears throat> so they can be fairly simple. They don't have to be really deep or um, hugely conceptual, but they should be something or some way of conveying more meaning or more to the image than one image alone could capture. So it's a way to kind of expand upon your ideas. They can be pretty literal or pretty straightforward. This is a panorama, but the panorama is slightly different. There's different wave patterns. Um, if we had the time and the ability to do it, it could be different seasons between the two panoramas. So something that kind of continues the theme or the thought of the photo, but does it in a way that sort of expands upon that. It can also just sort of be conceptual and you can kind of have some fun with it. You can use uh, the fragmented look of parts or pieces of something in these photos and tile them back together and kind of create uh, something a little bit larger. Now, this is six photos and I wouldn't go much more than six photos. You, you, can quickly sort of get into a narrative situation if you start to use too many photos. This works as six because it's very conceptual and and fairly abstract. And so they've used the six pieces in order to sort of recreate um, a, a, a surreal image. Same kind of feeling with this one, just using parts of a person in order to create sort of shape, form, and texture, and then using that to create sort of a, a new or different piece about it. They don't have to be so conceptual. They can be kind of straightforward. I know this may kind of feel a little bit conceptual, but it's pretty straightforward where it's recreating a portrait of somebody, but in a different um, unique way. And so think about how you can have some fun with this and how you can kind of play with it and kind of make it, make it do what you want it to do and kind of expand upon or maybe even turn it on its head, the idea that you had. It can be kind of straightforward. This one has some type that's added with it. You can add type with it, but be very, very careful that the type doesn't become super descriptive in other words, the images themselves should get across the idea that you want to get across. We don't, we shouldn't need to have words to get that across. So these words just sort of reiterate what the image is already kind of telling us. And so they, they very much work. The other thing that's going on in this one is they've put them on a black background with a border around them, a black border around them. And all the images are a different size. So you can think about what size, what shape, what form these images are going to be in and how you're going to present them. Are they going to be touching each other? Is there going to be a gap in between? Are they on black? Are they on white? How are you going to make these images uh, look? And, and how does that play into the narrative that we're looking at in there? They can be really straightforward. So these are deadpan shots of water towers. Uh, there's actually a large series of these, but here's two of them kind of presented in a diptych. And they're shot to take up the same amount of space in the frame, not the same scale. You can see the door on the one on the left is much smaller than the door or the window on the one on the right. But they're photographed in order to take up that same amount of space inside of the frame. So there was thought that was put into it so that they would all present themselves basically the same. You can show the passage of time, right? Guy standing in the street on the left, taxi goes by, guy steps forward on the right. It just shows the passage of time. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. You can just sort of play around a little bit and do something that's a little simple and unique that kind of 
tells us something about what we're looking at. You can sort of recreate things, you know, shoot a side, a middle, and the other side, and then kind of put them together and give us the feel of what you want to give us the feel of. But it's not literal. It's not straightforward. They don't even match up. And yet it kind of gives us that whole idea or that whole picture of what we want to see. Now, these are fun portraits because they're taken basically in the same place, but they're slightly different, right? The subject on the left is slightly to the left so that that sconce in the back on the wall, that light on the back of the wall is over her left shoulder or to the right of the image. And the image on the right, the subject is off towards the right so that the light is over her right shoulder or to the left of her as we're looking at the image. And so they really kind of feel and present themselves as the same space, but it's a slightly different, it's a left and a right version of that space, which is kind of a fun and unique way to deal with it. Another one that's tiled, six images tiled together. Uh, this I like to kind of illustrate that it's not one photo that's cut up into six pieces. It's six unique photos that are taken. So you can see that their heads moved. Their arms and their legs may not have moved very much, but their heads moved in between the shots. And so we get that feeling of movement that's happening in our image. You can play around with things not quite being in focus. I know this one's a little bit low res, but you can kind of see that it's sharp on the left, uh, not in focus in the center, and then sharper on the right. What's also unique about this is the spacing between the images. So the space between the image on the left and the center image is sort of like a comma, just a slight pause. And the space between the image in the center and the image on the right is like a period in a sentence or a much harder pause. And so you can play with the timing of how your viewer looks at your image and how they kind of move through it. You can play with scaling and focus and just kind of have some fun. So there's a little object that's made to look big and it's in focus and it's in a smaller frame, which helps it make it look bigger. And then there's a larger object, the tree in the right, that's out of focus and in a larger frame to make it look smaller. And so then the scaling kind of feels the same in a way. You can do a loose narrative, you know, show me some images that all kind of go together and give me a feel of what's happening or tell me a little bit of a story. This is not um, a, a literal narrative. It's, it's a more of a subjective narrative or a surreal narrative that's happening. These polyptics really lend themselves to that sort of surreal character of things. So this looks like a door and the door being open like a single image, but they've put that break of white in between so that it's distinctly two different images. And if you really look at the subject in the shot, it's two different poses between each of the images. This is kind of a fun one because it gives us a sense of space, but they've used the shirt of the person as sort of a texture or a bridge that, that puts those two spaces together. So they don't feel like they're right next to each other. It almost kind of feels like movement, like we're at the sink and then we're moving with the person and we end up at the stove. And so you can use textures and patterns and other things, other elements to kind of complete the triptych or your polyptych or series of images. It can be pretty straightforward. These are four separate shots. They were shot as squares. I'm sure it was shot on film, on two and a quarter film as squares. And they were each shot right around the same time in order to kind of play out and create this panorama. You can shoot similar elements, photograph similar elements and present them in slightly different ways. And it kind of plays nicely together. You can shoot different elements in a similar fashion and kind of get them to play nicely together. Think about how you're going to line things up, right? Eyes, nose, mouth, chin, they all line up different. The photographer chose eyes and let the noses, the mouths, and the chins do whatever they were going to do. But more importantly, they chose to photograph all of these people at the same time in the same kind of light, we'll, we'll put it that way, so that they have a consistent look, so that they work together. You have to think about how these images are going to fit together, how these images are going to work together, how these images are going to present as, as a whole. 
three different sized plants shot to fill the same, very similar to the water towers. What's kind of nice about this is that the horizon line of the center image sort of continues through to the right image. I love that kind of secondary read of how things connect in your images. Um, these kind of have a little bit of that secondary connection where they've, they've put the images right up against each other with no gap in the middle. And so it can almost read as a single image, except the top image is looking down and the bottom image is looking up. And so it kind of plays uh, with your field of view. Another sort of um, um, portrait of different scale, kind of showing a little more detail of the person's eyes and kind of loosely connecting it to their body. Um, this one just uses texture, color, and and the angle of the lines to really kind of play together and give us a real beach feel. So um, you can just use that and kind of play around with how different textures, different colors, different shapes kind of play off of each other. Um, here's one. It's sort of a portrait of a surfer, and it's three shots, and they chose to do kind of a long vertical for one and then two squares and then fit them all together to kind of create a new square. Um, one of the key things to remember is that each of these images kind of stands alone, right? They're all three decent images. And then when put together, they tell us that total story. So it's not taking an image that may be a little subpar and adding it to another image in order to kind of shore it up. This is, this is taking strong images, putting them together to create an even stronger set of images. I'm playing around with the lenses of the glasses and and angles and just kind of, you know, having some fun with all of that. Uh, same kind of idea here. Uh, using the color, there's some red in the image on the right that kind of plays off of the neon red on the left. And then the angles also kind of work where the lines all seem to go at about the same angle. And so these images really feel like they fit together. And it gives us the name of the bookstore and a little glimpse into the bookstore. So again, sort of expanding on, on what we're looking at and kind of creating a deeper meaning to it. Um, so what I want you guys to do this for this assignment, it's not due this week. It's actually due by the end of the semester. So this may take you a little bit more time. What I want you to do is maybe go out and take some photos and see how they fit together. And, and then possibly go out and reshoot so that you get two images, two or more strong images that really fit together, that really work together, that really tell us more of a story. There's instructions in the uh, assignment itself about how to put them together in Lightroom as a, a polyptych. I will do a demo in the coming weeks that will show us how to put them together in Lightroom or how to put them together in Photoshop for those that may want to use Photoshop. So that's your assignment for this week.